Our greatest weakness may be food, but this mouth-watering meal may have around half a milligram of pesticides in it. If that has to be quantified, it is less than a pinprick. But do you realize that this would mean that you are ingesting pesticide that is more than 40 times what an average American would consume? All pesticides are lethal poisons. In India, indiscriminate and unregulated use of pesticides is poisoning land, water, air and food. India spreads out nearly 90,000 tons of pesticides on its fields, making it one of the largest users in the world. Farmers use pesticides carelessly. Some use the wrong chemical, while others overuse. Many harvest immediately after spraying. That is why there are dangerous levels of pesticide in ladyfingers, tomatoes, cabbage and cauliflower. This is not rain. It is pesticides being sprayed on grape vineyards in Nasik. Harmful fungicides are used to ripen fruits so that it could be rushed to the market. If your cauliflower looks fresh and white, it is because it has been dipped in pesticide. Consumers would rather not buy the natural one, that is, a pale yellow. Pesticide residues in vegetables, fruits, pulses, grains and water can cause numerous health complications like cancer, genetic defects and impotency. The toxins are here. The slow poisoning of India is threatening our lives. Welcome to Kerala, God's own country. Sometimes names can be really misleading. Take this area in Kasargod. It is called Swarg. In Hindi and Malayalam, Swarg means heaven. Nothing could be more ironical. For those in Swarg, this is no heaven, as it is plagued by disease and tragedy. These are some victims from small village hamlets that got exposed to pesticide aerially sprayed for 26 long years in the cashew plantations of Kasargod district in Kerala. Many of them got paralyzed or are seriously ill. Swarg and other areas like Padre, Muliar and Belur in Kasargod district of Kerala have become living examples of how the poison in pesticides could be lethal to our health when used excessively and carelessly. The area is dotted with tragedy-stricken families battling physical deformities, cancers and disorders of the central nervous system. Government studies show it was caused by the aerial spraying of endosulfan on cashew plantations in an area spread over 4,700 hectares. Numerous children in the Vani Nagar school in Padre village have complex health problems. When Shruti was born 10 years ago, she had just one leg to use. The other was malformed. Her mother soon died of cancer, leaving Shruti to fend for herself at the tender age of four. Aimlessly running around the school is 14-year-old Udaya Maniani, who is mentally challenged. He was almost nine when he started walking and is still in primary school. He smiles, unaware of the tragedy that stalks his future. Udaya Shetty was born with cerebral palsy. He smiles at strangers and television cameras that film his tragedy. His family sent him to school just to keep him occupied. But children ran away from him in fear. Udaya Naik was born with a hole in his heart. He needs open heart surgery, but his family cannot afford it. 
Shruti tries to make the best of her life with an artificial leg. But others are not so lucky. Government studies show that the spraying of endosulfan pesticide on the cashew plantations had affected the health of the villagers. Endosulfan is a deadly pesticide banned in many parts of the world. It is mandatory to cover all water sources like wells, tanks and other water bodies during the spraying of such a toxic pesticide. But this was not done. Endosulfan hangs on long after it has been sprayed. Rains wash the deadly pesticide from the mountainous terrain into rivers below, which are drinking water sources. Swarga is one such stream. I started my practice here in 1982. As I became familiar with the families nearby my clinic, I started noticing that something is peculiar here. There has been high incidences of central nervous system diseases like uh, psychiatric problems and neurological de uh, deficits, mental retardation, uh, cerebral palsy, congenital abnormalities and uh, uh, moreover cancer cases. For the last two years, uh, because of a court or order banning endosulfan spray, there has been no spray here. Uh, the very good thing here is the life has started improving. The ecology, the nature has started improving. We can see the birds. Actually, birds, fishes, reptiles, uh, all had been ex uh, extinguished from here uh, during the spray time. As the tragedy of the victims got media exposure, the Indian Council of Medical Research asked the National Institute of Occupational Health to study the effects of endosulfan exposure on school children in Vaninagar. The study showed children had congenital abnormalities. Male children suffered from delayed sexual maturity, while female children matured early. Another study by the Kerala's health department also found cases of congenital abnormalities, mental retardation, cancer and infertility in areas where the aerial spraying was done. Endosulfan was also found in the blood samples of children. 14-year-old Manikandan from Muliyar has a serious skin problem. He stays close to the cashew plantations. He finds it difficult to sleep at night as his skin itches and hurts. Manikandan dropped out of school when he found that other students were refusing to sit with him. <laughs> Twenty-year-old Ashraf also lived very close to the plantation in Muliyar. He was fit and healthy in primary school. But gradually, his eyesight weakened, walking became difficult, and today he is mentally challenged. But Ashraf's father, Abdul, is now more worried about Shahina, his 10-year-old daughter. She is developing similar symptoms. Her eyesight is getting weaker. Nizamuddin from Natanige village looks three, but he is seven. His growth has been severely retarded. He does not speak, but mumbles. He too lived very close to a cashew plantation. But seeing what happened to him, his family shifted a kilometer away. But it is just too late. In the same area is 22-year-old Hemlata. Her mother remembers how she walked to school through the plantations while the spraying was on. But after the seventh standard, she found life going out of her hands and legs. Today she cannot move at all and lies in a corner. Seeing so many medical complications in areas where spraying was done, the Muliar village panchayat, which is the local self-governing body, banned the use or sale of pesticides. We don't have to worry about the plantation corporation. We don't have to worry about the plantation corporation. 
അത് പിന്നെ ഇപ്പം രണ്ട് വർഷമായി തളിക്കാതിരിക്കുന്നു ഞങ്ങൾ നിരന്തരം സമരം നടത്തിയതിൻ്റെ ഭാഗമായിട്ട് രണ്ട് വർഷമായി തളിക്കുന്നില്ല തളിക്കാതിരുന്നതിന് ശേഷം അവരുടെ ഈൽഡ് കൂടിയിരിക്കുന്നു അതാണ് ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് വിചിത്രമായിരിക്കുന്നത് ഈൽഡ് കുറഞ്ഞതല്ല കൂടിയതാണ് ഉള്ളത് അപ്പൊ പിന്നെ ഇതിൻ്റെ കൊണ്ട് എന്ത് ഗുണമാണ് നേരത്തെ ഉണ്ടായത് ഗുണമുണ്ടായിട്ടുള്ളത് പി സി കെയുടെ ഉത്തരവാദപ്പെട്ട ആളുകൾക്കും അതുപോലെ തന്നെ കമ്പനിക്കാർക്കുമാണ് ഇതിന്റെ കമ്മീഷനും ലാഭം ഒക്കെ ഉണ്ടായിട്ടുള്ളത് The Indian Council of Medical Research in a study found large amounts of pesticide residues in fruits, vegetables, pulses, grains, wheat flour, eggs, meat, fish, poultry and milk. The daily breakfast, lunch and dinner we relish could actually be a cocktail of chemicals. It is a complex issue. Pests destroy crops around 15 billion rupees every year in India. To save their crops, farmers use pesticides. But most of them spray it in excess, hoping it would be more effective. Studies have shown that only 10% of the sprayed pesticide hits the pests. The atmosphere absorbs the rest. So it goes on to destroy land and water bodies. Harmless insects that nature created to destroy pests also die in the process. Farmers do not even take the basic precautions like covering their face and wearing gloves while spraying. The pesticide industry in India is booming. It is worth over 50 billion rupees. As pesticide residues cross tolerable limits in indian agricultural products many countries are now rejecting indian tea and grapes among other food stuff sabjiyon par jab bhi hum spray dalte hain to sab spray ka jo asar hai jo wo sabjiyon mein ho jata hai usse sundi vagera to mari jati hai lekin uska asar jo hai so wo sabjiyon mein ho jata hai jo sabjiyan hum bazaar mein leke jate hain bazaar mein se aage public khareedti hai When India's green revolution started, Punjab had a pioneering role. But today there is a dark reality playing out in its fields. Excessive use of pesticides is taking its toll. Its topsoil and water bodies are contaminated with chemicals. Health is another casualty. हर चीज़ को आप जो है ना मतलब इतने केमिकल्स खाते हैं इनसे तरह तरह की बीमारियां नेचुरली बढ़ेंगी आपका रेजिस्टेंस है आपका इम्यून सिस्टम है सारा डिस्टर्ब हो जाता है उससे और बीमारियां फैलती हैं एज पेस्टिसाइड वॉज एक्सपेंसिव फार्मर्स टुक ह्यूज लोन्स बट सून इंसेक्ट डिवेलप्ड इम्यूनिटी टू पेस्टिसाइड्स एंड मेरली एट इन द क्रॉप्स द फार्मर्स हु वेल टू डू वंस अपॉन अ टाइम गॉट कोट इन द अन एंडिंग ऑफ डेट Punjabi farmers were among the toughest in India but in the last few years hundreds of them committed suicide their pride could not accept the shame that came with a money lender knocking on their doors welcome to harkishanpura in punjab once upon a time it was fertile fetching huge returns for its cotton crop Today villagers are struggling with huge debts that came with chemical farming. The land and water has been devastated with poison. Every year brings in more losses. The local self-governing body in the village has announced that Harkishanpura is up for sale. Almost every family reels under debt as high as 600,000 rupees. Pehla jehdi saadi ਸਾਰੇ ਪਿੰਡ ਦੀ ਪੋਜੀਸ਼ਨ ਬਹੁਤ ਠੀਕ ਸੀ ਕੋਈ ਸਾਡੇ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਕੋਈ ਕਰਜ਼ਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਵਧੀਆ ਆਪਦਾ ਚੰਗੀ ਫਸਲ ਕਰਦੇ ਸੀ ਚੰਗਾ ਖਾਂਦੇ ਪੀਂਦੇ ਸੀ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਜਦੋਂ ਨਰਮੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸੁੰਡੀ ਪੈਣ ਲੱਗ ਗਈ ਨਰਮਾ ਹੋਣੋਂ ਹਟ ਗਿਆ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹ ਤੇ ਖਰਚ ਕਰੀ ਗਏ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਪਰੇਹਾਂ 30 30 35 35 ਸਪਰੇਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਨਰਮੇ ਤੇ ਕਰਦੇ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਕਾਫੀ ਖਰਚਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਜਿਵੇ
Instead of destroying the pesticide containers, villagers reuse them to store food stuff. This is a family that uses it to store curd. Aji, kare spray kar de do. Baal je kol kar de hain. Ohi baal te to ke udbaat cha. Aji kare le hone hain. Ohi je pani pini hai, ohi je na hone hain. Ya dabba honda hai, ohi kare le hone hain. Aur lettering thare ke kare pe. India gloated over the success of the green revolution that introduced pesticides and agrochemicals. But it failed to see what it did in terms of destroying the rich biodiversity. Pesticides have persistent organic pollutants within that can dangerously hang around in our ecosystem for decades. If it settles on land and water bodies, it could result in neurological disorders, weakening of the immune system, and play havoc with the endocrine system affecting growth and reproduction. It is little wonder that in areas where pesticide use is rampant, genetic disorders and infertility clinics are thriving. One of the persistent organic pollutants is DDT. India still uses a large amount of DDT though it is officially banned in agriculture. Studies have even shown pesticide in breast milk samples from Punjab. Scientists at the National Cancer Institute in the United States say that exposure to pesticides could cause cancer. Pesticides enhance the risks of cancer by acting as carcinogens. Studies have shown that pesticides suppress the immune system, allowing cancerous cells to escape and form a tumor. ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬੰਦਾ ਸਪਰੇ ਕਰਕੇ ਆਉਂਦਾ ਉਸ ਨੂੰ ਰਾਤ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਸੌਣ ਨਹੀਂ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਜੀ ਵੀ ਕਿਤੇ ਸੁੱਤਾ ਪਿਆ ਹੀ ਨਾ ਰਹੇ ਜੀ ਅੱਖਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਖੁਰਕ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਬਾਕੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਆ ਚਾਮੜੀ ਤੇਰਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਅਸਰ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਰਹੀ ਚਾਮੜੀ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਖੁਰਕ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਰਹਿੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਪਿੰਡੇ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਚਾਮੜੀ ਰੋਗ ਲੱਗ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਜੀ ਤੇ ਮਗਰੋਂ ਕਹਿ ਲੋ ਟਾਈਨ ਆਗਦਾ ਜੀ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਬੰਦੇ ਦੀ ਉਹਦੀ ਦਾਰੂ ਪੀਤੀ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਨਸ਼ਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਜੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਦੇ The presence of adulterated pesticides in the Indian market is more dangerous Due to weaker chemicals, pests do not die but quickly develop resistance. Man is finding more and more use for the chemical. But the regulatory as, uh, agencies have not kept pace with that. So the whole objective is defeated. Making the area a free lawn for these people to play. The, the gross violation of human rights. This cannot happen anywhere else but the people will revolt. this apathy the kind of apathy from the government regulatory agencies and the multinational companies are really mind boggling in this country unless something is done quickly and effectively situation may go out of control and this nation will soon become a sick state over 600 farmers in nasik district have switched from chemical farming to organic farming This has come out of the realization that organic farming is the only way out to breathe life into their degraded land. Nasik has large grape farms that pump in pesticides worth 40 to 60,000 rupees per acre. A study on female grape workers in India found that exposure to pesticides led to a high rate of abortions. Abhilash Gorhe who grows grapes, pulses and cereals in Nasik has completely shifted to organic farming. After a bout of chemical farming, he opted to grow food that is free of poison. His farms are full of flowers and butterflies. He lets the weeds grow as it is a part of the natural ecosystem in a field. No wonder then that natural predators like black ants are actively eating the pests that attack his grape orchard. He's teaching other farmers to use leaves of various plants like the papaya, castor and custard apple to make biopesticides. When Madhav Rao Barve from Kothure village of Nasik in Maharashtra started farming 50 years ago, there were no pesticides. He used natural elements like neem and castor cakes to fight pests. Then came pesticides. Initially, the yield shot up but it soon fell as the land got poisoned today madhav rao is back to organic farming 
His organically grown sugarcane earns him higher profits as he does not have to invest in expensive pesticides. Every year his yield improves as the soil on his farm is getting richer. Increasingly farmers are trying to get out of the poison spiral. Using traditional Indian knowledge, they are whipping up portions and powders using plant extracts and animal waste to produce food that is rich and pure. They are using herbal pesticides like neem. As no chemicals are used, natural enemies of pests like birds and insects are thriving. Farmers like Tokia Modu in Warangal are now actually sticking in tree branches in the midst of their fields so that birds can perch on it and train their eyes on pests for their next meal. Green farming is finally in. These green farmers are waging a silent biological war against pests and are winning. This is the silver lining in an otherwise bleak scenario. Indian scientists at the Energy and Resources Institute in New Delhi have found faster ways to degrade pesticides like endosulfan in 15 days that would otherwise have taken decades. It is also working on development of plant-based pesticides that are environment friendly and biodegradable. Out of the country's total pesticide consumption, 55% is consumed by cotton farming alone. Andhra Pradesh, which is heavily into cotton farming, spreads pesticide worth 7 billion rupees on its fields. Nature created 27 natural predators of the American ballworm that attacks the cotton plant. But pesticide kills the predators even before the ballworm has come on the scene. There are more than 13,000 pesticide peddlers in Warangal itself. A few years ago, farmers moved from traditional crops to cotton as the profits were high. But with pests becoming immune to poison, their losses started piling up. The story of Punjab was being played once again in Waranga. Cotton farmers are now caught in the pincer of debt. Hundreds committed suicide, unable to pay the piling debts that came with heavy investments in pesticide. As pesticide is easily accessible, farmers or their family members were tempted to consume it to escape from the harsh realities of poverty. This is a hospital ward in Warangal with many such victims. With the soil wilting under poisonous chemicals, Farmers are now moving back to the traditional methods of trapping pests with light traps. Insects get attracted to the light at night and then fall into their watery grave below, which is a pail of water mixed with kerosene. Agriculture production is possible without using any pesticides and we must work towards building a world without using pesticides. A pesticide free village is definitely possible I think only commitment is required. We all now know that we have the power to destroy nature. But instead, can we use nature to help us live a sustainable life? The tragedy of pesticide poisoning can get transferred to the next generation due to genetic changes as we have seen in Kasargol. The frightening story of how India is being poisoned may not have easy solutions. But the longer we take to find answers, the shorter will be our lives. The World Health Organization estimates that over 70,000 people end up as victims of pesticide poisoning every year. Let us not be among them. Anuga 
Pagamur, 